Let's start. Welcome to Jack Spain Studio number 23, live three times a week on Twitch, uh, working on a sailing game uh, simulator uh, prototype. So um, what I did, and I'm not supposed to show how it works, is basically I uh, implemented um, the support for the uh, uh, telemetry. Um, and this is something that I really need um, for physics at this stage to understand what, what the boat is doing. And um, as you can see, it's, it's, it's pretty great. Um, basically, I'm using this program that uh, we also interface with um, in both in Netcar Pro and, and Assetto Corsa. So I'm I'm cheating. I'm saving the file as an Assetto Corsa file, and then I'm importing it into the telemetry viewer. It's not really a telemetry viewer designed for. So it works now. So I can I can pretty much look at um, super basic stuff like boat speed. Um, I can also. Uh, look for every sail. Um, let me clean this. So for every sail, I can look the current angle, the maximum angle that the sail is is allowed to have with respect to the boat. Uh, I can look at the instant angle of attack um, compared to the to the wind. Um, what CL um, coefficient of lift the the boat is doing, and this concept of um, ND, which again is something that I tend to use a lot in tires in Assetto Corsa with this concept of if your tire is supposed to give you the maximum grip at this slip angle, uh, where you are in the range to get to that slip angle. So basically what it means is like zero means you're not using your tire at all. One means you are exactly at the peak of your uh, slip angle. And more than one, it means that you made it over uh, above that threshold and you are in the uh, side of, of the slip angle that is not giving you the um, the optimal performance. And this is a very simple, um, similar concept. So you can see here, uh, the boat starts with below one, then it gets to one. This is a this is a trace with the automatic uh, sail trimmer uh, enabled. So you can you can see that the sail trimmer in this trace is doing quite a mess. So it's trying to chase it desperately, desperately trying to chase. Uh, so that's the ND, and this is what the trimmer is doing. So you can see that they are. You know, somehow, yeah, they, they chase each other. So it's like it's a, it's an overreaction from the trimmer, and this is what is happening, um, which is not really one hundred percent clear to me yet. But you know, we're getting there. Um, so this is a, a very um, useful instrument. Um, back to the. To the game itself, uh, there are a couple of new things. The most important is something that I talked about last, last Friday at the end of the stream, and is the concept of ventilation. Uh, if you remember with the older version, um, right now I'm completely in manual mode, so I'm controlling everything, sail angle and uh, so sail trims and, and foils. So. Remember what I was saying is, let me get, let me try to get to the foil. You already saw an example, a small example of uh, ventilation happening. So in the older version, I could basically get as high as I wanted on the foils and nothing will really happen. Nothing bad will really happen. Uh, the, the boat will just happily uh, ride on the foil as high as, as we wanted. Right now, um, so what was happening is that if the foil was coming out of the water, so you, you can imagine the foil at, at, a sli at, at an angle, uh, angle of attack over the water because it's creating uh, lift. So as this foil was coming out of the water, um, what was happening is that the moment the foil is out of the water, I get zero lift. 
right? It's not lifting the boat anymore. So the boat will fall down. But what was, what was happening is that as soon as it will touch the water again, um, it will get into the water not only with the slip angle that slip angle, <laughs> with the angle of attack that he already has, um, but also with the additional velocity going down, which it, which will give it even more a little bit more angle of attack. So it was basically immediately generating lift again. So you had the situation where the foil was going over the water. You will start basically planning over the surface of the water, which is not really what this kind of foils do. Um, and the reason for this, I think, but I suppose that is pretty much right, is this concept of ventilation. So what is happening is that um, as air enters in contact with with a foil all the the the, the parts that is supposed the, the flow of the water around the foil is disrupted and what is happening is that uh, the foil can actually bring this bubble of air down with it so what is happening is that once you get out of the water with the foil you need to sink it down a certain amount right now 1.5 the length of the of the foil Right, so if, if you have a foil of one meter, which is not the case, you will have to go one meter and a half in the water in order to restore the flow around that, that, uh, that foil. Um, I'm still researching, but I, we definitely have a behavior right now that is uh, more similar to what you can see on TV, which means that if I overcook this and I go out of the water, the boat will basically, there you go, fall down like this and it will. It, it depends on how it's falling down with the nose. It, it will lose speed quite fast, right? So, so before you could pretty much run the boat as high as you wanted uh, and forget about it. And right now, you you have to you have to pay a lot of attention, and especially with with waves. Um, Hold on, let me let me put this thing into a stable, a stable. All right, it's pretty much stable right now, so I can talk. Especially with waves, um, it becomes really tricky. You need to you need to work on it a lot to to make sure that. Um, you're not getting out of the water. If the water is more calm, it, it's definitely easier, right? If you have this kind of water. Whoop, whoop. It will eventually become slightly easier because I want to add a little bit of V-shape to the, to the foil, which will make it the foil um, more self-stabilizing. You see that with the calm water, is everything happens a little bit slower, so it's easier. If I start to put waves, uh, then it, it really becomes difficult. You really need to start chasing the the waves because if 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 you lose the uh, and 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 another thing is that um, it becomes easier as you. The, the faster you go, so the more you go fast, it's just like an airplane, the more you go fast, the more the boat tends to sort of stabilize itself in, into a good into place. Um, right now I'm controlling the, the sails myself, um, which is quite, quite difficult. Um, and, I, and I'm going to have a, a, a bit of a discussion about this because this is complicated but just want to show you it's really giving me um, a little bit of Grand Prix Legends um, vibes right so it, it's really a game that especially to get out of the water at the beginning is so hard you need you need to be patient
because what is happening is that I'm 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 putting the foils, uh, I'm putting the foils at maximum, right? Um, so you get all this angle of attack, and as soon the 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 boat comes up of the water, the boat instantly starts to accelerate because it loses the drag from the from the body of the water, and as the boat starts to accelerate, the lift goes up with a square of the of the velocity. So it means that you you have all this angle to come out of the water. You come out of the water, you start to accelerate, and and the boat really wants to keep coming out of the water. So you have to do this kind of things where you have the maximum uh, foil. As soon you come off the water, you, you have to put it down. Um, whoop. That's uh, the mouse <laughs> recovering from not being captured. All right. So let me see if I can. I have a huge problem with, see, see what happened right now is uh, foil ventilated. I went into the water and I lost a lot of speed. In this configuration, my boat right now has way less sail drag than the boat that the good, this ghost was recorded with. So I'm faster in this. You can see I'm faster in this stage. I have less drag on my on my sail. I can I can sail definitely faster than him. My big problem comes with. Um, okay, let me stop and talk about what the problem is right now. Um, one of the problems that I have right now is that I really wanted in this game um, to try to avoid uh, radars and overlays as much as possible. I really wanted the player to be required to have a special awar awareness awareness of uh, what was happening. Um, so in order to see where my mark is, uh, if you remember from, from the the streams, uh, the earlier streams, what I wanted to do was turn my head on the left and, and, and see where it is. The problem is right now, if I have to steer the boat, foil the boat and trim the sail at the same time, adding the extra complexity of even try to turn my head is, is just too much. <laughs> it's just too much. You can do it. Let me try if, if I can do it. That's the uh, ghost not supporting the stop. So it, I can do it, but you know it's so easy to, to lose track of what is happening. You can do it in a situation like this where the boat was stable, but you can imagine if you are in the middle of, of something, right? Um, you won't be able to, to do that reliably. One thing that I like about the manual sail is that I can do this kind of maneuver where I am overpowering, deliberately overpowering, deliberately overpowering the sail to, to get this sort of huge angle where I am in the air with one side of the boat, um, which is something that the automatic uh, trimmer will stop from happening. So the automatic trimmer will try to keep the boat always like that. And it means that you, you can't overpower just because you, you, you say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, I, I can roll a little bit, just get me on the way. Boom, and we lost it. So difficult to come back from, from a pose. Right. So the idea here is that um, by, if I trim the sail uh, more, I will increase the roll on this side, and if I if, let me, I'm, I'm losing. And if I trim the sail down, I will roll on the other side. Now I have a, usually have a huge problem in going downwind. So let's see if I can make it this time. Let me try to to have a, a one thirty. See the see the foil now is real as the speed is coming up. The foil really wants to 
throw me out of the water. Look, look. Oops, going in the wrong direction with the trim, and I lost it. Yeah, it's it's difficult. Uh, it's already difficult by itself. Uh, doing it while I'm talking is even more difficult. It's it's really um, demanding. If I enable the automatic seal trimming, things become much easier. Not super easy because I still need to foil, which is which is good. I mean, compared to to the older versions. So right now I can just put the blue bar to say, "Give me, let's go as fast as you think it's possible," and the seal trimmer is just doing it for me. So we are already at 18 knots. I can start to raise the boat and you see that I only have to care about the foil. You see that the boat is not doing weird angles. So all I have to do, I can just concentrate on the height of the foil. Right. And let's see if, yeah. <laughs> I would say, let's see if we can win this one. And I lost that wave and went into the water and lost speed straight away. This is, this is the difficult speed. Well, first of all, we are going completely... Yeah. The boat is not fast enough to give me that sort of super planted field, so I have to try to copy the wave direction. But at least I have a little bit of time to look around me, you know, without going completely crazy with, with the thing. So let's, let's turn before him. See, that, that was a, a much better one. down but it's definitely more relaxing not easy but definitely more relaxing than try to control also the sails should we treat it like a real boat so let's treat it like a real boat and well is 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 ahead anyway i can't cannot oops Cannot do much. Okay. With, with a sea like this, is really... Yeah, I lost it again. It's really the man. And you can see how easy it is to... lose a race just because you drop the, the boat in the water once. it again right now I set my water resistance a little bit lower so I'm losing speed but I'm not losing that much you see I'm falling we'll watch a replay of this so we can see Thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, boom, bang. And we go from thirty-five to nineteen in like very quickly. All right, bang. And it goes into the water. All right, please. Um so my plan for today is uh try to stop a little bit this thing where if I want to you stop using 
um, the automatic trimmer, I have to go and change the code like this. I will still change the code, but in a not just, <laughs> you know, bypassing functions or things like that. Um, and if we can make it, uh, I would like to actually get the boat to to drive completely by itself, which is something that I already seen the boat doing uh, on a set course, like, okay, go 90 degrees and it just goes uh, and foils and does good things. Yeah, before I start, just a couple of things about the game itself the the time for me is coming where um, I I will have to decide what to do with this game um, it's been almost two months now that we are in this prototype stage and I think that after two months I now understand I have an understanding of what the game could be uh, to be played and the conclusion that I that I have after this couple of months is that it's going to be a pretty demanding game especially for um, falling catamarans or falling falling boats like this uh, I don't know to be honest the, I uh, I was watching some videos about the new America's Cup boats and I am under the impression that they have a uh, software controlling the boat uh, or at least helping um, it's not really clear for me if if there is so it could be that those boats are slightly easier to sail than this one where everything where you have no software so um, everything is pretty much manual so to 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 drive this boat is pretty hardcore if you want to do everything if you want to do the sail the helm and the uh, and the foils is very hardcore actually the sails right now we are even in a simplified stage because there are two sails right one of the reason why i'm sometimes slightly slower um if I'm doing the manual sail is because I am setting the same angle for both sails, which might not be exactly correct. Um, and of course, you know, because you have two sails, you can do a lot of stuff with the boat. If you have the boat that tends to wants to go away from the wind, you can, you can adjust it and so on. If you have a boat that wants to go into the wind, you can adjust it and so on. So having the control of two sails makes things even more complicated, right? So to play to play alone, uh, this is pretty hardcore if you want to drive this kind of boat. So it's really a game that is sort of asking for multi-crew, right? Of course, multi-crew, mul doing multi-crew in a game that right now has basically no community. There is basically no sailing game, sailing simulators community out there. Yes, there is There is one mobile game um, where there is a community racing, but it's so simple and basic compared to <laughs> what these guys are going to be asked to do in this game that you know that's that's the thing that really scares me it, it it could really the risk is really to have something that as i was saying it reminds me of grand prix legends grand prix legends is uh is, is probably the first real um racing simulator uh in history right we had games before grand prix legends grand prix legends was really the first one to properly simulate the car in all this difficulty and the car they chose to simulate with which were formula one of 1967 were way more complicated than than cars uh, even the cars at the time right uh, the cars that people were used to to drive in games so the game sort of became legendary uh, but it also 
didn't really, you know, at the time there was no hardcore racing simulation community. Um, so, new for fun. Thank you for the follow. So, yeah, it's 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 a very very difficult decision for me. It's a very difficult decision because. Uh, in some weeks, I will have to decide what to do. I will have to decide if I want to commit to this and and make it, you know, my my the the things that I'm that I'm going to work on for the next two or three years, right? And because once you commit to it, you need to you need to see it to the end. You see, you need to see it to the end and see how it goes. Uh, and give and give all you have uh, to make it happen. Um, the more the more I go on with the prototype, the more the idea of saying, "Ah, never mind. Let's not do a selling game. Let's do something else." You know, now now is going to be like two months work uh, that are sort of throw away uh, not not entirely because all the work on the graphics and on the engine will will remain it's just the, the work on 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 the game itself that will be lost right it will be a waste of time um so yes difficult difficult decisions uh, ahead uh, for me um, to understand if this is really something that can work no, right now this this boat should be able to foil by itself and I'm only steering and we can see we can see the red bar and that's the the AI doing it Where's the other boat? Ah, of course, I deleted the ghost. <laughs> That's why it's not there. All right. Okay, so this is super easy, right? Now I have all the time. That's the thing. I mean, if 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 people are going to race traditional boats on this, they will have all the time in the world to to look around if they're not foiling. Look at this. Super easy. What's the purpose of the foil? Is the, the, the foil is raising the boat over the water. So if you see, uh, where are we? Where is the boat? There you go, that's the boat. So if you see, the boat is not in the water it's flying over it right and the reason is that this is the foils so it's got this foil here and this foil we can do under the water and these small foils here and this foil here so basically this is working like an airplane wing so it's raising the boat over the water and because you don't have all this part of the boat touching the water uh, you get much less drag resistance from the water so the boat can go much much faster right if it's foiling like that because it's removing all that friction and and the fact that if you have such a big object in the water you all the you need to take the water away right in order to to move into the water so rust is automatically protecting you from doing something stupid which like this it looks completely stupid right completely okay why would you do this right but we had something like this in a set of course competition in a, in a place that you cannot see because you can have a you know a do something else right which will somewhere inside will do something else with trimmer
right? So you could have you could have this function. This function could be living in a completely different file in a different class that has absolutely no understanding that is being called into this iteration, and it would be all right. Okay, I can push stuff into Trimmer, right? There would be no way for the guy who wrote this function to understand that is tripping this. We had this happening in a set of course competition, and it was like six levels down you know six layers down uh that there was there was a, a loop you know in in the in the in the list of cars and six layers down somebody was deciding ah let's let let, let me add this but yeah um but, but whether or not the time you save in that part of the project trying to chase these problems is more than the time you waste at the beginning of a project figuring out how to make it how to make the border checker happy i don't know i don't know what's the at the end what's the the the, the, the difference between these two because it, it all comes to that if the time you waste making the border checker happy is less than the time you will take to fix all the bugs then Rust is a good thing. Otherwise, it's not good, a good thing. Still, the interaction between the jeep and the main sail is uh, an interesting thing. I have to think about this because the jeep is also controlling, adjusting for roll. I wonder if it shouldn't. Probably the jeep should just just go just go without without adjusting let me check let me check that should be easy to do now because in the auto trim if i turn off this so if if request is always the controls global sail trim right so that means that now the the AI is always setting the jeep to to its best regardless of role so i have complete control of the role Yes, it's right there. Yeah, that fits, this feels better because I feel like I feel like I have control, more control of the role, because it's not interacting with what the AI is doing with the with the jeep. So it's completely up to me. The jeep is always going for it. This is actually not bad, you know, the driving with automatic foil. Let me try a tack. Let's see how it works. So stable when. It's quite easy, actually. To a configuration file so I can change it quickly. So now I'm, I'm back controlling mainsail and foils and the AI is controlling the jeep something that I really don't know about this boat and I would really like to know um, but 
I don't see a way to do this without getting connections with people that are inside. It's like, my question is, all, with a wing sail like this one, um, what is the stall characteristic of, of this wing? Is it a very abrupt stall like, like a plane? like a plain wing or is it a more soft stall like like a wing like like a sail this is actually very good with the with the jeep with the jeep automatic and me controlling the main sail is much easier no hands Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah, yes, okay. <laughs> I know why. <laughs> Hold on. I know why. I need to re enable the roll control. Is this enough? I think this is enough. Um, let's see if the AI can do its parade run by itself. Perfect. You can see is 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 running with this not super optimal roll of four three, and this is something that I really think that something like a, a neural network could work, could really make things bring it to the to the next level. We're going almost to 50 knots. Let's go 50 knots. And then I want to try if the eye can manage to go. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, 50 knots. All right, that's that's working. I'll change position on the boat, so I will have and raise or lower boards, so I will have to do it myself. So go on this side and move the boards, sir. This will just prove us that these, the norm, normalized roll is working because you can see now the roll is minus, blah, blah. But for the algorithm, it's positive, right? We are rolling leeward. Okay. That's, uh, that's good, I think team is online so I can close this right and so guys thank you very much for uh, st stopping by checking this one if you are watching this on YouTube remember you can follow this live three times a week on on Twitch you know you can just go on my channel on Twitch and check the, the schedule my next stream is going to be what did you think? today Wednesday so it's going to be Friday morning at 10 o'clock and uh, and I will see you there ciao ciao